on a rainy Saturday morning. So obviously we're in Glasgow to agree to take directly. Um, you know, I think Sabrina and I, we stand here as human beings first, okay, as part of this planet. But absolutely, yes, it is important for us as proud Africans to be a part of this debate, to, to, to have Vanessa to be a part of this debate in a day and age where a picture can have both Vanessa and, and, and Greta in a picture, but Vanessa gets cut out, except they're not just cutting out Vanessa, they're cutting out, as she said, a whole continent. And that continent is very central to this debate. It's very central to the solutions. You know, if you consider, I was born in the 70s, and before the sort of revolution that we now say is responsible for damaging the ozone layer, before the aerosol can, all right? I was born in that era. Well, if you consider that Africa is the only landmass in the world where you can create a, a huge, if not m leadership city, sustainably well, uh, we're, we're, we're led by young people, we're in a position to implement, uh, in, uh, influence that now. And so, yes, it is important that we have Vanessa, Idris, Sabrina, Agnes, everyone of color speaking up for this debate because it's Africa that's right in the center of it. And one thing I've got is a big mouth. Uh, so that's what I'm using it for. One of the things that strikes me during the worst times of the pandemics is when we saw Western countries with their civilians lining up for food. These are families that have homes, that don't have farms, that live in the West, live in LA, live in London, live in England, and they're lining up for food because there was a food shortage. Now that wasn't because of climate change, it was because the supply chain was damaged. But the supply chain is going to be damaged if we don't figure out what to do around climate change and what it's doing to our food systems. That image of all those lines of people in LA lining down with families waiting for food is a reality for us in the future if we don't find ways to tackle this issue now. That's what I'm doing here. That's why Sabrina and I work with IFAD because IFAD for a long time has been focusing on small scale farmers. Small scale farmers deliver 80% of the food that we eat.